Hello, hello. This is my third episode on the tutorial series on how to use the ship designer. And in this episode, I would like to show you more in detail how the generators, electricity and heat work and how to properly use them in the game. Without further ado, let me show it to you. In order to keep this video nicely organized, I'll be separating it into five distinct parts. First, I'll show you what electricity is as far as the game is concerned. I'll then show you the components, the heat, quite a few tricks that I've learned along the way, and I'll finish with the big generators and how to set them up. The very first component of your generator setup is the generator itself. The generator is what's going to be giving electricity to the rest of your ship, but it cannot work on its own. It uses processed fuel. The processed fuel is given by the fuel chamber that takes in the raw fuel from the fuel rod to transform it. The sockets are going to allow you to transfer electricity, data and heat to the rest of the ship. The heat sink is responsible for soaking up all of the heat from all the different components in order to give it to the radiator in order to dissipate it. Once the components have been placed down, you then need to link them together through the cables and pipes respectively. Since generators and fuel chambers cannot go from 0 to 100 instantly, the usage of batteries is needed in order to, to buffer for the amount of time needed. And with this, you now know the basic components of a generator. Now on to the components. Generators and fuel chambers come in three different tiers. Tier 1, Tier 2 and Tier 3. As a general rule of thumb, the higher it is, the better it is, but also the higher the price tag. The rods don't have three tiers. There's only Tier 1 and Tier 2. So in order to figure out what can and cannot work, what you need to know is that tier 1 is standalone. You cannot mix tier 1 with anything else. However, you can mix tier 2 and tier 3, may it be generators, fuel chambers or the rod itself, without any problem. Mixing tier 1 with either tier 2 or tier 3 will give you a generator setup that's either going to work poorly or not at all. Something else that you want to keep in mind while setting up your generators is the ratio. In order to have both the generators and the fuel chambers running at 100%, you need the 3 to 1 ratio. This will give you the best balance between power and fuel efficiency. You may, however, decide that you want your ship to stay operational on the field for longer periods of time. In which case, you simply have to reduce the ratio of generators to 2 to 1, 1 to 1, or even lower, in order to reduce the rate at which your rods get consumed individually. There is a catch, however. You cannot increase the ratio of generators to fuel chambers. This will give you no added benefits and will come at the expense of additional heat being generated. The next component I would like to show you are the heatsinks. There are three different heatsinks in the game. They have exactly the same statistics. They do, however, vary in size and only slightly in the crafting cost. One thing that they all have in common is that this, which you can see right now on the screen, is in fact a duct. This allows you to use the heatsinks blocks as you would ducts. The most commonly used heatsink is the cube, simply because of how convenient it is to be able to snap it to your generators. They do grant you another advantage, which is that you can output the electricity, the data and the heat of your generators through the cubes themselves. However, there is a catch about it, and that is that your generators must have an electric socket attached to them. You don't need the heat socket, but you need the electric socket, even if it is not cabled. The lack of that electric socket will prevent the heatsink from outputting any electricity of your generators. It's a bit of a weird catch, just be aware of it or you'll be spending quite a lot of time wondering why your generators are not working. Another thing to be aware of is that a heatsink does not pass the connection of the generators and the fuel chambers together. You cannot have the fuel chambers on one side and the generators on the other. They will not be connected together correctly. 
you must always ensure that you have a direct connection generator to generator and generator to fuel chamber in order to make sure that your setup works as intended. The next important component that we're going to be addressing are the announcers. They come in three different tiers, one, two, and three. The most important thing to get out of the way is that enhancers don't give any kind of bonus on fuel chambers. That used to be the way you use them, it is no longer the case. Knowing when to use what enhancer is quite important, so here's how they work. Each enhancer is going to give you respectively one, two or three electricity production tokens. These electricity uh, production tokens get added in order to determine how much electricity can a generator have as a bonus, which is 500, 750 and 1000 electricity. They don't go over. You cannot have any more than three electricity production tokens per generator. However, the heat tokens do accumulate and they can go way over uh, five. This means that you can end up with a nuclear power plant that needs all the cooling but won't give you the electricity. As a rule of thumb, you can have six different possible combinations of enhancers on your generators. One tier one, two tier one, three tier ones, one tier two, one tier two and one tier one, one tier three. Any other combination will give you less than optimal results. An interesting quirk about enhancers is that they do not need to be set up against your generators. As a matter of fact, they can work as far as 96 centimeters away from your uh, generator. This allows one enhancer to hit multiple generators at once and reap most of the bonus without the cost. It's just not super easy to set up and may end up in weird contraptions. Please note that enhancers are by default turned off. You need to turn them on in order to have the electricity and heat increase. All of this remote stuff allows you to pick up an enhancer and wave it in front of the generator. And as you can see, the electricity production bonus just goes up, down, up, down, up, down. The downside of having all of these remote enhancers is that you cannot use buttons to turn them on and off as they are not linked to your ship or your LOL network. So just make sure to turn them on in the ship designer and it's going to be fine. This leads me very conveniently to the next part of the video which is the heat management. How do you manage it? How to avoid having a flying toaster that can't do anything without overheating? How does everything work? Let me show it to you. First thing to note is that there are multiple components that are going to be uh, generating heat in your ship. Namely, generators, fuel chambers, weapons. Those are the only ones that are going to be generating heat that is going to then require dissipation. They do dissipate a very small amount of heat themselves. The bulk of the heat is then transferred to the heat sinks directly, although a small amount is directly given to radiators. The heat sinks also do themselves a very slight heat dissipation. The heat sinks only then transfers 750 heat per second to the radiators. The radiators then dissipate 1500 heat per second or 750 heat per second which means you can either have a 2 to 1 or a 1 to 1 ratio depending on your needs. If this does seem a little bit too complicated to have exact values for you, my recommendation is to very simply keep slapping heat sinks and radiators on your ship until you see that neither of the two are running at 100%. It's as simple as that. The last part I did not mention about the heat dissipation components are the cooling cells. They are... Um, quite unpopular in the ship designers. Uh, they are very finicky to use, although in theory they should allow you a much more compact uh, design. Do feel free to experiment with them. Next are the tricks. What can you do to improve your ship design? The first trick is that the radiators do not need to be put onto hard points and then cabled to the rest of your ship. You can in fact directly put them onto heat sinks and 
generators or fuel chambers and they will work as normal. The only exception here is that they will no longer communicate any data with the rest of your ship. So if you want to have this super compact design where all of your radiators are on heat sinks or directly onto your generators, just make sure that at least one radiator is normally cabled so that you will have the information should you ever want to display it on a dashboard. The following trick is that the generators and fuel chambers will generate more heat tokens, which increases the heat exponentially, if they are too close to one another. So the important part here is to know how to build your generators in order to include heat sinks or just to include gaps in order to avoid too many neighbors and reduce the amount of heat. It's a balance between how compact you want your generators to be and how much heat they're going to be generating. As stated previously, heat sinks can double as ducts. This is interesting because you can transport heat, electricity, ammo, pretty much anything without it impacting your budget on cables, pipes and ducts. This allows you to make much bigger structures without compromising the budget. The next and last trick on the list is the way that the game considers connections. They are way simpler than it seems, as in only the central part of the connection is what matters. The rotation does not matter at all. This applies to pretty much any object that connects to one another. As long as those central parts are connected correctly, the game does not mind at all. This allows you to be very creative as to how the different elements can go with one another, allowing you to be more compact, to go bigger, or just make maybe nicer designs altogether. And in my case, I decided to go Picasso just for the sake of a demonstration. The next and last part of this video are going to be the big generators. The hardest part of them is going to be of how much of a pain they are to assemble because they really are like a big, big puzzle um, and how expensive they are to use on your ships, both on the resource price, but also on the voxel volume budget. Long story short, the Exorium fuel tank is the equivalent of a rod the converter is the equivalent of a fuel chamber, and the generators are just good old generators. Just like with uh, normal generators, big generators have got quite a few do's and quite a few don'ts. The first of which is that the order Exorium tank, converter and generator must be respected. One Exorium tank can be shared by multiple converters and one converter can have multiple Exorium tanks. It's up to you to decide how long you want your generators to be able to run at 100%. The ratio of converters to generators is still 3 to 1, exactly like the normal generators, the same rules apply here. Big generators are not affected by enhancers, produce exactly 70,000 electricity per second at 100% and 2,560 heat per second regardless of the amount of neighbors that they have. They are unaffected by the heat tokens. Additionally, although you can cable the converters and the Exorium pure tanks, the generators specifically must be cabled and piped if you want the electricity and the heat transfer to go out. Otherwise your generators will very simply overheat. This concludes my video. I thank you a lot for watching it till the end. Both blueprints of the big generators and small generators are going to be in the link of this video. I strongly do encourage you to experiment with, uh, with those and to find your own conclusions as I'm absolutely certain that I haven't covered 100% of it. Once again, thank you very much and see you next time.